I have to flip this camera around. I have to show you my view right now. That's a mountain. And there's a whole sheet of clouds, right? Right in front of it. And it's just, I don't know, something about that looks really sick. If y'all be loving nature like me, I mean, y'all understand. <laughs> I could stare at this for hours. That's sick, that's awesome. Let me set the scene for you. It was 6 a.m. one morning. I was waking up to start my day. I was waking up at 6 a.m. at that time, every single day, trying to stay consistent with that. I had just woken up. Can you guess what the first thing I did was when I woke up? I pulled out my phone. I opened the Instagram app on my phone and I'm looking at reels. I'm scrolling through reel after reel after reel, hypnotized by the amount of content I'm consuming first thing in the morning. All of a sudden it was now almost 7 a.m. I wasted almost an entire hour of my morning watching reels 7 a.m i'm supposed to get on my computer and start doing work i'm supposed to start working on my affiliate if i don't start posting clips for my affiliate i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be making any money at all story does not end there i grab my phone again and i open up instagram again reel after reel after reel after reel i do that three times over. I had an addiction and it was ruining my life. It was ruining my productivity. I wasn't working on my business as much. I was ruining my relationships because I wasn't even present anytime I had a conversation with somebody. I was off in La La Land thinking about not okay. Now I did attempt to do some work on my computer I'll let you guess how that went. Didn't get much done. Now, I had completely overcame this habit quite a while ago. But even to this day, two years into self-improvement, when I am on social media, when I am on the internet, I still find myself getting a little distracted sometimes. Now, not during my focus work. I don't use social media. I, don't, I turn everything off when I'm working on, on work. But just throughout the day, I'll find myself. Instead of reading scripture, I'll go to an app. I'll go to Instagram, I'll go to uh, distract myself. Twitter, I'll go to Twitter and I'll just scroll. 10 minutes later, I'm like, what am I doing? This isn't building my future at all. This isn't growing myself as a person, spiritually, physically, or mentally, or financially as a result of any of those things. I was wasting my time. Restricting social media, I know the sun is kind of covering half my face right now. Um, <laughs> oh well, I'll be recording in my studio soon. Um, it's almost set up. Restricting social media seems like a very minute thing, but doing so to the best of your ability in many different ways will cause you to have better relationships, better friendships. It will change the way you view women entirely which I'll touch on later on. And I don't mean like it has the same effect as porn does. I mean, it could if you use it for that purpose, but it will destroy your perception. When we lived in tribes in the old days, we weren't seeing 500 women a day. That's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing tons of options. And it's, send, it's setting our physical standards to be very high. And it's making us overlook a lot of spiritual and mental and really good qualities in people. Not just women, by the way. Also friends, connections, clients. We just we, ov we overlook a lot of important things when we have our mind warped by social media. It will also change how we view the world, how we view life in general. This... It feels like when we're on the internet, 
we see a lot of negative things, a lot of negative news lines, headlines, and there is a lot of negative things going on in the world. Trust me, there is a lot of evil stuff going on in the world. It is a very evil place. But if you go out on a hike right now, it's not going to seem that bad. In fact, life actually feels very spiritually fulfilling and good and everything's fine. You're at peace because that's God's creation right here. It's... Social media has made us look at the world through a very negative lens. Bottom line is, if you want to experience life through the spiritual fulfilling lens versus a depress depre depressive, anxious, unfulfilled, distracted life, if you want to experience a fulfilling life, the life you experienced as a kid when you would play with chalk and explore new parts of the neighborhood and meet the new kid in the neighborhood and play with Legos and I'm not saying go whip out Legos and play with them as an adult. I mean, you could do that, but like what I'm saying is there is a lot to life that we overlook and it's actually destroying everything. It's making us hate, hate our life. Worried about all these things that don't matter. Step one to overcoming a social media addiction is replacing your content with better content. So no matter what, I'm not gonna be able to tell you to quit all your social media. I can't tell you to quit all of them. I don't think, I mean, I haven't even quit all of them. That'd be hypocritical of me to say that. However, a really good first step to take right now, and this is an actionable step, is to actually just restrict to manage the content you're seeing. Now, of course, algorithms and everything, but you can still follow certain people that just create more positivity, create more, a better look on life. So follow pastors who give good messages about, you know, that'll help with spirituality, your spiritual health. Follow um, cool nature accounts, you know, showing off trails in the area or hiking or lakes or in the, in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of those accounts of people just, of just exploring. It's great, actually. I love seeing those. But if you can kind of overhaul the content you're seeing and the content the algorithm is feeding you and to positively reinforce those good videos that actually do make you feel better instead of making you feel some kind of negative emotion, that will help tremendously. You know, and start following self-improvement creators for that knowledge that you that you could really use. I mean, about meditating, journaling, all these habits, imbalance method, any of these habits that are actually really interesting. If you can, if you can just switch to books, and then when you do use social media, whenever you do, keep those positive creators and those positive videos in your feed as much as possible, and to reinforce that kind of content on your social media. And people say, oh, I, I only use social media to text people or to text my friends. Yeah, but I mean, how many times have you went into Reels for a moment and, you know, scrolled through a few or a few dozen? Happens fairly often. These apps are really good at just making you want to click that little shorts tab or that little Reels tab. They're really good at it. So for step two, actually go and delete the lesser used apps. So let's say you don't use Facebook very much or Twitter very much. Go delete those apps. You don't need them. Because the thing is, when you get bored of Instagram, when you scroll and you get bored, and when your dopamine kind of went back down, <laughs> your dopamine rush went back down, and you scroll through all the YouTube shorts and all the YouTube videos, you have no more videos to watch on your subscriptions page. What you can do is like, in that moment of desperation, you've been there, I'm sure you have, where you go straight to another app, which you don't usually use. All of a sudden you open the weather app you open twitter i'm not saying get rid of the weather app but you open twitter you open facebook and then you open i don't know rumble whatever you any app and you're just looking on there for more content more dopamine because obviously you didn't get your hit of dopamine from instagram so i actually go and delete those lesser used apps because you're not relying on them you don't have people to talk to on there you can't make excuses for these apps just delete them. You don't need them. Just delete them. It'll make life a lot easier if you have less apps on your phone to waste your time on. 
Okay, step three, create a timetable. So this is actually a really important step, a very vital step. If you are going through your day doing, just kind of winging it, oh, well, you know, I kind of go to the gym at 9 a.m., but, you know, today I'll go at 9.30, but maybe, uh, or maybe 8.30, because, you know, or, you know, uh, 10 a.m., I mean, I mean, I'll just, I have work maybe. At a, like, some, so many people just wing their day. Or their day is revolved around work, but the rest of their day is just, you know, they're just winging it. Let me tell you, if you're working a full-time job and you're winging your time off the clock, you are not getting anywhere with that business. You're not getting anywhere with that woman. You're not getting anywhere in your growth as a person. You really need to plan, plan your day out. So this is what I do. I have a Google calendar I use as my timetable. I, I think it's an amazing template, a lot better than using the notes app. I used to use a notes app and just write my day out the night before. I don't do that anymore. Um, what I do is I go on Google Calendar on my phone and on my computer. I could probably even show it. Let's see if I can show it here. Yeah. So right now, here, let's see if I can get it to, the sun's kind of shining. You can kind of, kind of see it. So, um, so right now it's showing like the four days, each like column is a day. And uh, it just kind of, you just kind of have little blocks that you can create. So I have, like, when I wake up, 5:30, I do cold exposure, so I take a cold shower. 6 to 7 a.m. meditation, gratitude, maybe get into scripture a little bit, have coffee if I so choose to do that. And then 7 to 9 is my focus work. So and so on and so on. So when you actually plan out your day, you can't waste time. When you wake up 5:30, oh, yeah, I take a cold shower. Get your ass in the cold shower and then decide. Okay, I'm gonna waste time afterwards. And then you'll go do your focus work. I'll waste time after. Oh, but I have to go to the gym now. I'll waste time after. Oh, but I'm hungry now. I gotta I gotta get my protein in. Waste time after. Oh, and then you go to your job. Planning out your day will minimize boredom for one. It'll minimize not knowing what to do. It'll minimize just it'll just help so much with your social media addiction. You probably noticed when you're just living a busy when you have a very busy week. You're not on social media very much just because you have so much to do. It's the same for your timetable. So if you can schedule your morning out, stick to that. And then also schedule just the entire day. I mean, I have every single hour of the day. There is not one hour of the day missing on there. Even my sleep. I even have my sleep schedule. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not... I'm not wasting time. If I'm bored at, you know, 1130, I have my work block right here. And usually I have something scheduled inside the work block in advance as well. So I know what to do during that work block. Of course, if I have like my job or if I have something else to do during that work block, I have it scheduled already. I know what to do. So, uh, by the way, a little side tangent, I, this isn't really related, but scheduling like tasks you have, like laundry or just really random things or appointments, doing that and actually putting it down, little minute tasks, like, oh, I'm gonna eat dinner at this time, that will completely change your productivity and your mental health and everything, because there's a thing called decision fatigue, I'll be really quick, but decision fatigue, which actually, every time you make a small, minute decision in the day, you're actually kind of losing brain, pow brain power, brain points, and you're losing energy throughout the day just by making small decisions like that, like what to eat for dinner. Oh, well, I'm gonna eat Chipotle, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook my, I'm gonna cook beef and eggs for dinner. There you go. That's so it's like it will help in a lot of other areas to create a timetable. It will, it will just help a lot. So definitely consider doing that. It's an actionable step right now. Go ahead and create a timetable on Google Calendar. It's really easy. It's actually kind of fun. So create your perfect routine and then but like something you can actually like stick to. And just your goal should be to stick to that routine as much as possible. Don't be like, oh, I got to change my routine now because I just haven't been sticking to it. Just do your best as long as it's feasible and you can do it. Just do your best. And if you do the perfect routine 50% of the time, that's amazing. That is so much better than what you were even at before when you were just winging your day. A perfect routine, perfect productivity, perfect gym time, perfect nutrition. Like that's going to help a lot with your life. So that's a very important step to take in overcoming your social media addiction, but also just mental health, everything really. Now that you've chosen to consume better content and 
delete the lesser used apps, and then actually create a timetable. I'd say the fourth step in, in overcoming your social media addiction is to is actually restricting your screen time. So this is kind of the difficult part, but I use an app called Opal, or I used to anyway, I don't really use it anymore, an app called Opal, and that will help you restrict your screen time. I think you can do it in Apple settings too. I don't even think you need an external third-party app for this, but especially during bedtime hours because late nights is when I always used to have the worst like habits for social media. Late night, I would scroll on Instagram and YouTube and watch videos and guess what? I didn't get very good sleep and that ruined my next day in the gym. It ruined my next day in nutrition. It ruined my next day for focus work. You definitely want to take the actionable step of minimizing and even forcing yourself to not use social media during bedtime hours, but also just throughout the day. Now you can do this any way you want. You can, you can minimize how long you can be on social media in the day. So like you can cap it at 30 minutes per Instagram or whatever, or you can just block the apps during certain hours. So if you have a focus work block at like 7 a.m. like I do, seven to nine, you can just block the app and you won't be able to access it whatsoever. It won't even let you open it. You won't see any notifications, which by the way, just turn your notifications off anyway. Do not disturb, you don't need to see them. Um, that'll ruin your social media addiction because you'll see the notification, you get a little dopamine hit. I'm like, oh, I gotta respond to that person. Oh, like just, <laughs> just, just disable them. Restricting your, your screen time is really important because inevitably, even if you're living a busy life, even if you're deleting certain apps, even if you're doing all this, you're still gonna find an excuse or you're gonna find time to just waste, especially during bedtime when you have no more tasks to do in the day or no more work or anything you're gonna waste a bit of time on social media because i mean we've been so used to living this life of indulgence of social media and apps to where we've just kind of accepted that we require like time on social media so once you've had a busy day or a productive day and it becomes 9 a.m and you're getting ready for bed you feel you deserve an hour of just scrolling but it will ruin your sleep even if you fall asleep, it will still ruin your sleep quality. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So keep that in mind. Restricting social media um, screen time is very important as well. Now, I'm not saying delete. Um, so if you notice, I didn't include a step where it's like, delete, delete this app, delete that app. Because inevitably you will return or inevitably you'll make excuses for it. I still have Instagram. I still have YouTube. I still... I don't have Twitter on my phone. I still have a lot of these apps, so on my phone. Uh, not TikTok, though. Delete TikTok. This is an actionable step. Just delete TikTok. You don't need TikTok. TikTok is the biggest waste of time. You can't make excuses for that. You don't even talk to people on there. It's not like a social media app in that way. It's just a time waster. Delete it now, please. I beg you, delete. TikTok is the devil. I rebuke TikTok in Jesus' name. It is a bad app. Do not waste your time on it. But in terms of uh, like Instagram... I don't really feel addicted much anymore. I don't feel the urge to go look at reels. And as a result, I've been watching a lot more podcasts and good content. And I've been um, reading my Bible more and reading books more in general. And it's been, it's been great. I've learned a lot. I've been growing as a person and as a result. And you really realize how much time you actually have in your day pretty crazy how much time you have in your day to learn and grow and experience this and do that and work on this thing when we're on social media we waste so much time we're in so much of a trance for so many minutes and hours to where we don't even realize how much time we have in our day i feel like the day just kind of flies by i've been there that's no way to live life you will never feel this spiritual fulfillment or physical or mental growth if you are wasting time like that and you don't want to live it, you don't like it. You probably don't even really enjoy Instagram or TikTok. You're like, eh, I mean, it's just kind of, it's because you're getting a dopamine hit from it. That's all it is. That's why you don't really enjoy it. Now, if you can get away with deleting all your apps, perfect. That's awesome. What I do actually, and this is kind of a little tip, a bonus step, tip, whatever, is to actually uh, log out of your accounts on all these apps or log out of all these apps when you're not using them so that you don't be more inclined to flip back for a minute and flip back and then, you know, back and forth. Cause 
I used to do that a lot, as I explained in the intro. Um, so that will minimize a lot of that because you just won't go through the effort of logging back in if you don't really need to use the app. So like Instagram, I log out and then when I, when I need to use it, when I want to post something, when I want, need to talk to somebody, I'll log back in and then just do whatever I need to do. So hope this video helps. Uh, let me know if it did. I would actually really like to know. Yeah, it's, uh, I really hope this helps you guys because it's helped me. And I think time, creating a timetable will be the biggest thing because if you stay busy, you will have no reason and no care, or even any interest in wasting your time on social media. So I love you all. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.